Today's lesson in our calculus book is uh, called section P-2. It's in the preparation chapter and it deals with linear models and rates of change. This is a section that really dates back to Algebra 1. So we're going to go through it pretty quickly and so we can get to more of the good stuff in calculus. But I want to make sure we're all very comfortable with slope. So we're going to call this lesson all about slope because that's really what we need to be able to be successful with to do calculus. Calculus has a lot to do with slope which is what you'll see over the coming months. So first let's talk with, about slope and Hopefully you all know the letter, the symbol that's associated with slope. It is the letter M. I know it seems like a strange choice, but it actually comes from a French uh, origination. There is a French word, monte, meaning to slope or to slant. And not that you'd ever be asked that, but I always think it's an interesting piece of trivia. Our basic definition of slope is that it is rise over run. Meaning, how much do you go up and down? What's your vertical shift divided by how much do you go left or right? What's your horizontal shift? We can use symbols, and we're going to use these symbols a lot in calculus. Delta meaning change. We can say it's the change in y over the change in x. And then finally, we get to our most basic formula, which is what you learned back in Algebra 1. y minus y over x minus x. It doesn't matter which point you start with. I always write the y sub 2 first. But truly, as long as you pick a point and say, this is the point I'm starting with, and you're consistent with that, you'll get the same answer. Uh, you want to make sure that you always do put the x's on the bottom. You have to think, I have to rise before I run. And if you do that correctly, you'll get the correct slope. We have four types of slope. We have positive slope. And best way I can drive, describe positive slope is like you're going up a hill as you go from left to right. It is a diagonal line with a slope that is going up. You have negative slope, which the slope is going down or dropping. We also call this a falling line where the slope is, um, it is going down as you go from left to right. And we know if it's positive, if we get a positive answer for this formula. If I get an answer of 1 half, which is positive, that's a positive slope. If I get an answer of negative 2 thirds, that obviously is a negative slope. We have undefined slope. Um, sometimes this is also called no slope. No slope visually is a vertical line. And what it means is when you do your slope formula, you're going to get some number up here when you subtract the y's, but you're going to get a 0 when you subtract the x's because it has the same x coordinate. And when that happens, we, we know we're not allowed to divide by 0. So we say that's undefined or no slope. And the last type of slope is the 0 slope. 0 kind of by process elimination it has to be the horizontal line. We say we what happens with this formula is when you do your slope formula you get a 0 on top which is fine and you get a different number on the bottom and we know that 0 divided by any number is 0 whereas this one would say this one is undefined. <coughs> Those are our four types of slope. So you can look at any line either visually or with an equation and be able to figure out what the slope is what type it is. Equations of lines We have a lot of different formulas we can use. The first one, that the most common one, the one students like to use because it's short, it's easy to remember, is called slope-intercept form. And it's the one that you start learning back in Algebra 1, y equals mx plus b, where we know that this is the slope and the b is the y-intercept, so where it crosses the y-axis. The great thing about this formula is you can really write any equation as long as you know where it crosses the y-axis, as long as you know the slope, or even if you only know a point in the slope, you can use this formula. It's a very versatile formula. The next one is not necessarily a favorite of students because it's longer, but I still want to explain it to you because it does show up, especially when we get closer to actually looking at AP tests. It's called point-slope form. And it's very well named because that's what you use. You use a point, any point. It doesn't have to be the y-intercept in a slope. Here's the formula. Hopefully it looks somewhat familiar. You take y and then you subtract the y-coordinate. So this has to be replaced with, let's say, let's say the point was 3, negative 2. You're going to put negative 2 in where the y sub 1 goes. This m is the slope. And this y sub 1 is where you put in the y coordinate. So again, if the point is 3, you're going to put a 3 there. So let's say we have a situation where we know this is a point and we know that my slope is a half. I plug everything in where it belongs, so I'll have y minus minus 2, so that's going to be y plus 2, equals 1 half x minus 3. 
You actually could leave your answer like this if it doesn't specify the form. This is a perfectly acceptable form, although a lot of students think of it as complete. If you really want it to be in slope-intercept form, or if the problem asks you directly to be slope-intercept form, then you have to distribute and move the two to the other side, which I know that many of you guys are very comfortable with. Um, again, we'll write that down. You can distribute and move the two and you can get it into a slope-intercept form. Some students prefer to always do slope-intercept form and just say, I'm going to take my m, I'm going to take my x and my y, and then I'm going to solve for b, which is fine, but it is important to under be comfortable with each form so you can recognize it. The last form, really the least useful form, is standard form. Standard form is great when you're working with word problems because it's easy to write word problems in standard form. It's not that great when you're talking about either technology or graphing because you can't graph things in standard form in your calculator and you can't look at it very quickly and identify the slope like you can in the other forms. If you want to find the slope, you have to rewrite it. Um, we also did things in class where we, um, in Algebra 1, maybe Algebra 2, where you find the intercepts, where you cover up the x to find the y-intercept, cover up the y to find the x-intercept. So there's different things you can do with graphing to make it a little easier, but a lot of times standard form, it's much more helpful to rewrite it into a basic y equals mx plus b form, and then you can identify the slope very quickly, the y-intercept, and you can graph it. Some special types of lines when it comes to graphing, we have horizontal lines. Horizontal lines are always in the form of y equals a number. So, for example, y equals 2. If I wanted to graph y equals 2, I would draw a line, a horizontal line that crosses through t on the y-axis. A vertical line is x equals a number. So, again, if I want to do x equals negative 1, I come over to negative 1, I draw a vertical line through it, and I'm done. Uh, they don't have both intercepts. The horizontal line only has a y-intercept, and the vertical line only has an x-intercept. They are very simple to draw, though. The next idea is comparing rates and ratios. These are so two things that are so similar that a lot of times students don't really see what the difference is. So I'm just going to very quickly touch on the difference. Rates have two different units. So think about your rates, feet per second, or miles per hour, or kilometers per second, something like that. Your ratio are comparing two things that have the same units. When you do slope, that is a ratio, because you're always working with units on a coordinate plane. So, for example, if I say something has a slope of 2 over 3, that's a ratio because it's 2 units versus 3 units. Whenever you have a rate, it's really important that you write your unit. The, what's similar about both of them is they both involve division. The last piece I want to talk about is parallel and perpendicular lines. Since we're talking about slope and we know what's similar with parallel and perpendicular if I have parallel, hopefully you remember the symbol for parallel is two straight parallel lines, and I have perpendicular. Symbol for perpendicular is an upside down capital T. One thing I'm going to keep in mind, because the AP test doesn't tend to use the word perpendicular, they use the word normal, which is the same thing as perpendicular. But for some reason, when you take an AP test, you'll never see the word perpendicular. I don't know whether they think it's too long or they're trying to be a little more uh, scientific because that's the no word that's used in more of a science-based problems. So if you see the word normal, just keep in mind, it's just perpendicular. Parallel lines have the same slope. That's what makes them parallel. And then perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slope. So for example, if I know a slope is 2 thirds, then the perpendicular or the normal slope would be negative 3 over 2. You flip the fraction and change the sign, so it has two changes. We're going to go through, as we go through class tomorrow, we're going to write a couple equations, and that's where we're going to start, is we can take something like y equals 2 thirds x minus 5 thirds, and we can come up with a parallel line. So let's say if we want to make it parallel through the point 2, negative 1, and we could also be asked for the exact same thing, but say I want a perpendicular line through the same point, 
And the nice thing about your calculator is you actually could test it. You could graph your original one. You could graph the one you get for parallel. You could graph the one you get for perpendicular and see that visual representation. So that's where we're going to start tomorrow. I want to make sure when you come in tomorrow, you're comfortable writing equations of lines, using giving it information, and also with parallel and perpendicular relationships.